all the engines, rolling stock, or other malicious creatures who happen to live in the moderately sized city of Knapford on the island of Sodor, only a small percentage of them have managed to stand out amongst the chaos and bad decision-making skills, past a decrepit education system and potentially corrupted local government. How this man went from red to blue in one crazy step. Paint manufacturers hate him. These are the Wilson Files. In order to get to the beginning of our story, we need to look beyond his birth. <coughs> even past his conception in the mid-80s. No, to fully understand how he ended up like this, we need to look as far back as the year 1958, with the birth of an engine by the name of Gus Freight. When I was born, Napford itself hadn't been recognized as an actual town yet. It was more like a clump. Thanks to the actions of the dictatorship, they only allowed up to 10 engines to live here at a time, which often made things rather awkward growing up. Oh, what a beautiful child! Thank you! I lost four of my brothers and sisters this way. It only took the wrong people to get angry for something to be done about it. I'd like to introduce you to the Natural Revolution of 1964, a violent and gruesome revolution that lasted 13 long minutes. That old dictator slaughtered all my children! Now, that may sound explicit to you, and that's because it was. We fucked! One overthrow later, and the dictatorship was replaced with a local government run by Mayor Stephen Stevenson. I'm not gay, I swear! He wasn't even good at it either! I just laid there. Remember, it's not gay if you wear socks! So how have you managed to win every election since becoming mayor in 1964? Election? The change in government allowed Knapford to finally grow as a community. This era of rapid growth is when Gus's only true sibling was born. Wilbert. After seeing the fates of my previous siblings, I wanted to form some kind of stronger connection with Wilbert. Our parents were rarely around, so I was usually the one to take care of the family shed. My father would grow up very privileged. Uncle Gus would just feed him whatever he wanted, all the time. Wilbert's favorite food was always chicken. The family shed used to be on farmland, so it was one of the few things that readily available before the days of Walmart. Fuck you, Walmart! Cheating me out of my chickens! I always wanted to start a business, and Wilbert always wanted to eat chicken, so what happened next was just natural. Los Pollos Hermanos would be founded in 1979, operating out of the old freight farm. It was popular for only selling items with one core ingredient. Chicken pizza, chicken pot pie, anything you could imagine with chicken. We sold it, even chicken ice cream for a bit, until we learned that was disgusting. It was still a hit. The success of the business, not to mention all the money the brothers got from selling the farmland, attracted a lot of attention, especially from the very wealthy Hunzert family, who wanted to invest. Big businesses deserve to die. Even though plans fell through, the Hunzerts and the Freights would still unite in another way. Children! The way I see it, a big explosion happens whenever something important to the multiverse happens. Like when Steve Jobs decided, I want to invent Apple, and took out half of California with him. He's beautiful. At least you can tell it's mine. Gus will be thrilled. 
Wilbert, I know he's your work partner and all, but would it kill you to spend some time with your son? We finally have a family. Aren't you happy? Of course I'm happy. It's just, Los Poyos is gonna be our family's legacy. And Wilson won't be? That's not what I- Yes, it is. Go mess with your experiments in the loft or something. My father never really spent a lot of time with me growing up. He was always trying to innovate. My mom just wanted to have a functional family. I got to be the Godfather. Like the movie. I've never actually seen The Godfather. I tried to watch it once when I was 18, but then a sex scene came on and I've never touched it since. But, there's no nudity in that movie. I said what I said. Wilbert was always trying new ways to bring in business. But soon, it became clear that having one Donkey Kong arcade cabinet in the dark corner of the shed wasn't enough. So, he installed a second. This time, it was educational. The kids would now be doing math without even knowing it. Shabbat? You named him Shabbat? It was Gus's idea. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go again. Stop letting Gustavo control our lives. Am I the bad guy for wanting my brother to be a part of our children's lives? You took Wilson out of school to be homeschooled by the guy. Are you seriously jealous right now? Jealous? Jealous? You are. Oh my god, his first word! I'll get it. Don't you fucking dare! Mm, mm, mm. Yes? Mm, mm. Mento. Your first word was mento? That's what happens when you just leave your kid in front of the TV all day. Fills that soft, punchable skull of theirs with corporate advertising nonsense. So, is there anything you can tell me about Shabbat? Now, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I worked all day getting them just right. What are you doing, crack? What the fuck? Alright, I'm gonna take a hike. No. The late 80s was a great period of growth for the Los Boyos Hermanos business, and this was thanks to another one of Wilbert's many innovations. Robots! With lasers that could dance and sing. They could even dispense chicken flavored ice cream, taking a page from establishments like Chuck and Cheese. Chuck Fuck you, Chuck! That's not even your real name! Two singing robots would debut during the autumn of 1988 Freddy Fatbear and Barney the Big Purple Dinosaur. They were great with the kids. And adults. Maybe a little too well with the adults. <laughs> then there was the blind of 89. I lost my eye to those lasers. I didn't mind, but apparently it was a health and safety nightmare. Assholes. You just turn them into glorified mascot costumes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You would wear the costume and interact with the families. I put my bad after in the microwave! You liked using the Barney one the best. He was definitely a closeted fairy. They approached the dockyard film sometime in 1990 by creating a television series based on the mascot characters they created. They must have seen my work on the series Engines of Eight, which had a third series in production at the time. We were unable to produce it in the old studio, which had just closed thanks to some unfortunate events, so we had no choice but to outsource it. The show was alright. I never saw a lot of it. Shabbat always got to decide what was on and he always chose the same fucking show. I helped design two additional robots, which ended up becoming actual additions to the restaurant by 93. Unfortunately, while I was working on Gus's show, I made the mistake of handing over ownership to the wrong people. I'm getting crown my, I'm getting crown my, I'm getting crown my. Engines of eight, Thursday nights at eight. We never did get that full season. They gave us a lot of merch from the show, Want me to unbox one? Aren't you worried about the value? Nah, I've got 50 of these things laying around somewhere. Alright guys, welcome to Wilson's plastic play objects. Today we're going to be unboxing David. Oh sorry, rolling stock? It's got some huge fucking teeth. I wouldn't want harsh stereotypes like this to remain mint condition. I don't think this guy has had a breath of fresh air in about 25 years. Man probably smells of fresh fish. Nobody bought these things. Wow, look at all these ugly children. Why are you blue? So now that I'm divorced, I can finally use big boy scissors. Oh shit. Why am I making this hard to do? 
Get me like a saw or something so I can get in this fucking pack. Oh, my camera! That's how much damage I've done. If you release this to the public, I swear to God. I should have never given these scissors. They is in the government. Oh, it's open! It's like if you tried to deliver a baby by stretching it out. David, in all of his chomper glory, he has four unique phrases. My name is David Krakatoa Shopper Van the Fourth, and I live at 308 Never Island. You can't Island. say your I'll full name and address. H7104. I'm pretty sure David Saltavan is a real guy. David needs help filing his taxes. Let's see how he compares to. Oh, holy shit, he's huge! Look out, single mills. The David is on the loose. I have made several dangerous enemies during my years in Guatemala. Do you mind? Go, go, ethnic slur! Robert and Shannon's marriage wasn't doing too well. Robert would focus more on improvements to the restaurant, while Shannon was still attempting to raise their two kids. So do you know what they did in 1996? Had another child! Because that makes sense. In a way, their daughter was the last hope for the family, so that's what they named her, Hoofright. It was around this time that I saw some changes in Wilson. We're finally at the Jerkass Wilson arc. Woo! So, anyway, I had begun getting an education at North Knapford Secondary Train School in September 1998. 1998 was my first year teaching. I had some financial troubles the year before and was in desperate need of money. Probably would explain why I didn't just quit after dealing with Wilson. Ugh, I'm gonna do some Scottish snoring. <sighs> me, 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 me. Huh? What the hell? Where do you think you're going? <laughs> Whoa! Blow out! <laughs> Fuck that guy. All my friends hate Wilson. Now give me seven pounds. And that poor girlfriend of his. Ah, uh, the gun prank. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have met Karen. The one engine that could tolerate any of Jerkass Wilson's, uh, Jerkassness. Yeah. Maybe a divorce was inevitable. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the annual Christmas party. We even had famous musician Paul Mac shopping cart on stage before. Thanks to me. So, you're saying you didn't have any kids at, oh, I don't know, age 16? Of course not. Why? <coughs> what? The turn of the millennium would begin to be the downfall of Los Boyos Hermanos. It all began with the party. November 13th, 2000. It was a party, all for Shabbat. What my family failed to notice was that Shabbat was absolutely terrified of the robots at the restaurant. <coughs> I don't know why. So... Do you know anything about the accident that took place that day? Simple malfunction. Could have happened to anyone. Uh-huh. Maybe this will jog your memory. I love birthday parties! Oh crap. That doesn't look fun at all. Wow, your brother is kind of a baby, isn't he? It's hilarious. Why don't we help him get a closer look? He'll love it. No, please! This is so sad. Come on, guys. Let's give this man a lift. He wants to get up close and personal. No! What the hell? No, I don't want to go. Holy crap! You heard the little man. He wants to get even closer. <laughs> hey, guys. I think the little man said he wants to give a big kiss. On three, one, two, <laughs> Ben. Was that the bite of eighty seven? What? My whole world is turned upside down. That's not me at all. That's not you. No, that guy's red. I'm obviously blue. 
You're red. Maybe you did this. You sick son of a bitch. So, Flick, did you attend the party? I did, yes. Wilson invited me out of nowhere. Thought it was to apologize. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't to apologize. Did you see the bite? Yes. I just finished drying myself off and fixing my eyebrow piercing. Me Anyway, I saw commotion, strolled over and blood spied all over Wilson and his friends. Shabbat Freight would later die from his injuries. The time of death was 2.42pm. As a result, the suits would be retired and put in storage. In its place was a giant cardboard cutout of Tom Cruise, designed to make the business safer. I never liked that cutout thing. It was always thinking, and it could go anywhere. It was made to keep the kids in line, but Wilson just kept moving it in places to scare me, not to mention the fact that it didn't even protect anything when the time was right. Not again. I told Dad to give me my own key. Ah, Uncle Will. Thank goodness you're here. I've locked myself out again. I really need to get back to Daddy. He'll be worried about me. Uncle, please, can you let me in? What are you doing out here anyway? They've been in the security offices full. You smell funny. Have you been drinking? No. Besides, you're nine. Way too young to be talking about that kind of thing. Yes, you have. I could smell it. I thought that Auntie told you to stop. I can't believe you. Forget coming back inside. I'm finding Auntie. You don't want to do that. Uncle, get out of my way. You don't know what I'm capable of. Drinking. You're capable of drinking. Lucy? Fuck. Fuck. I've got the smell of alcohol on me. Shadow will kill me. Damn Catholics. Ugh. I'm gonna need something to cover it up. I'm sorry to do this to you, Tom. There. Bye, Lucy. See you later. Or not. <laughs> Wilbert, my own brother, killed my child. My only child. My father was scum. He got so lucky with his lawyer. And who was his lawyer? No. Not him. Chuck, I need your services. Alright, what's the problem? My niece died and they're blaming me for it. Interesting. How much are you willing to pay? Chuck, you're my best friend. We've been together since primary. Please. Best I can do is give a discount. Fine. 45 grand. That's my family savings. Done. Now, you must tell me the truth. Did you do it? Oh my god. Why did you do it? She was in the way and was going to ruin my marriage. Please, don't let me go to jail. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. I remember what he did next. As clear as day, Wilbert Freight was found not guilty of Lucy's murder. Isn't the Sudrian justice system great? No! Once it reopened, Los Pollos Hermanos were once again monopolizing the fast food market. And with McDonald's in town, this was impressive. Fuck you, clown! I know you're in there! Whoa! Jesus Christ! Jesus. Fight me, you coward! Someone help my son, please. They soon decided to open another restaurant across the town. Wilbert would use this as a base for his next crime. So, let me get this straight. Your father wanted to dress up in a crappy costume to commit enough crimes for the business to shut down? Correct. That's literally a Scooby-Doo villain plot. Scooby-Doo, my ass! This plan is a culmination of my life's work! Everything's going to change after this! Ah, we've been found. We're playing hide and seek. Ah, he looks mad. Mister, we're sorry. 
You're going to scream, are you? Oh, sweetheart, nothing is fair. Oh, look, boys and girls, this little boy's going to cry. You know what that means? Noise! Noise calling! <laughs> This is fun! I feel ah, noise! Ugh, I got a stain on me. Right, what do I do with these? Bingo! The bodies were discovered the next morning. Wilbert was arrested a few days later. Wilbert would be set free shortly after, due to a supposed lack of evidence. They had him on video killing the kids and putting them inside Frank the Normal Man. Poor Frank didn't deserve this. He's just a normal man! There shouldn't be any night workers. No point clearing this up. I don't have a reputation to hide anymore. This place will close for sure now. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise, but I threw you away. No, no, that's not possible. Hello, Is someone there? Wilbert, what are you doing here? Did you break in? No, I was using the spare key. Spare key? I changed the locks. You broke in. I'm going to call the police. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Fine. As long as you don't come back here. That's fine by me. The door is unlocked. Leave. What the fuck? Walmart! Both restaurants had to shut down for a few months after this. The newer building would not reopen and would be built over by one of their soon-to-be competitors, the Coal Hopper. Shannon isolated herself after this, so the kids would enter Gus's care for a while. Oh dear. The timeline must have been changed forever again. Let's see what causes it this time. Oh. Him. How the fuck do we reproduce? Like, genuinely. How are we born? Or made? Or whatever we are. Are we real? What is sludge? Wilson. Huh? Oh yeah, Giles. He's a little odd. His first word was sludge. I'm like the best student in my class. You're failing all your subjects apart from biology. A man knows where the right spot is. I'm ending this interview. Ah. Fuck you, politicians! You may have ruined my chances of graduating, but you're still a good kid. Okay, okay, he's not perfect, but I love him. Bulldozer! Do I kill the spider? I like him. He's my son. I hope. Can we move on? Yes. What happened between your parents? Great. One night, Wilbert came home after being arrested for some stupid minor crime. Mum snapped at him and told him that she wants a divorce and he should start packing. He moved into this bunker. It was originally a storage facility for Los Poyos, but was abandoned. He came around hours every so often, but it was never the same. Two thousand and four, the year that he marries his high school sweetheart, Karen. The wedding was something. I'm sure he would have showed up if he wasn't so busy. Let's just cut the cake already. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Why would you hide inside the cake? Payback for what he did at my wedding. <laughs> they invited me to the wedding. That's kind. They boxed me and threw the crate into the sea. Oh. <laughs> Remember Hope? 
This train? Yeah, we'll get back to her eventually. Meanwhile, back at the loft, Wilbert was trying to rebuild the Lost Polaris brand. Dockyard Films, who technically had the original rights to the characters it created, went bankrupt in 2003, so they went to Wilbert instead. He would take this to full advantage. Redesigns were in order. Freddy Fat Bear was designed to be a sparkly orange mess. Barney became a different shade of purple. Poyos became a victim of the deep fires. Frank was unchanged. Frank was perfect the way he is, and by 2005, everything was ready, and this time, nothing would stop it. Oh, yeah, it was his weekend with the kids, or just kid. Wilson was a legal adult who was busy raising his own kid, and Chabot, last I checked, is still dead. Hope, all weekend, was given only one instruction, to not touch the fat sparkly bear. But who can resist such a cute bear? <coughs> Dear Lord above, take care of my son. He's a little misguided, but he's one of your best creations. I know this may be selfish, but I don't care. I have lost everything. After that, the remaining family members, Wilbert and Wilson, stopped all communication. Neither wanted anything to do with the other. Wilbert would mysteriously go missing, never to be seen again. This was also around the time Wilson's son, Charles, was starting school. He did get into his fair share of trouble, but what six-year-old didn't? Oh, hi, Mark. It's been a while, hasn't it? You said that yesterday, and how many times do I have to tell you? This is the train school, not a daycare for children! Don't you have kids? No. Huh, what about that guy over there? Oh, they're just in detention. That's the Dinky Diesel. Dinky Diesel. Dinky Diesel. Dinky Diesel. Dinky! My dad hates the word dinky for some reason, and anything associated with it. Who let you back in here? Shabbat would always watch this really dumb kid show, The Dinkies, and I don't want to get into the horrors I witnessed. So anyway, I got my first job in 2011. Karen could always afford things with her own job as one of the top food critics in the city, but I thought it was about time for me to get money as a night watcher at Los Boyos Rentals. It was Gus's idea to rent out the animatronics, except for Feddy. Gus stored him in a back room for reasons. Seriously? They replaced Feddy with a cock when they sold chicken? Wait, that sounds wrong. Penis. They replaced Feddy with a penis. Much better. Weird. Bit jolty. Hello. If you are hearing this, you are the new Night Watcher. You must make sure that each animatronic is up to date. My name is... <coughs> and I will guide you through the night. That's a funny name. We are about to reach the floor. Please take all belongings and exit safely. The new Gus was cheap, but jeez. I left my tea in there. I hope the rats enjoy fish fingers. Well, this sucks. Good evening. This is the Cruise and Barney Control Center. Cruise on left and Barney on right. Turn on the light to see if they're there. Control room for cardboard cutout. Oh well. Ugh, what happened to him? Wonderful. Tom Cruise is in a good state. Ugh, but what about his career? Uh, voice? Voice? Uh-oh, Barney isn't where he's supposed to be. Let's zap the shit out of him. That won't anger him at all. As I said, cheap. If you continue down the corridor, you will come to the Fed Frank control room. Please turn on the light and check in on Fed 
Frank. Oh, what the fuck? Get out! Get it out! Wonderful. Get out. Fed. Get out. Frank get is in a good state. Get Let's out. get back to the lake. What the? What the hell? Get me out of here! Ow! The hell? <laughs> now born into our trap. For years we've been stuck here. No way to escape. Now that you came here, we can become you. We will live as you. And nothing's gonna stop us. Is that what you just injected into me? Yes. Why? You feel any ill side effects? Not really. I'm blue now. There's that. You don't feel any pain of any kind? No, that was just a mild inconvenience, if I'm being honest. Well, goodbye! God damn it! Why do we even have pain here? Fuck! Great buggers. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your first night. Your pay will be added into your bank account when you exit the building. I hope to see you tomorrow. I did not! Get me out of here! Gus had decided to rent out the animatronics for parties, which seemed like a better business plan. The retired Feddy Fat Bear for good. Los Pollos Rentals shut down in 2011 after an unfortunate accident, and they were stored in one of the previous restaurants. After hearing of this, Wilson knew that he didn't want it to happen again, so he hatched a plan. Sorry, but I have to do this. No. Story over and over again. Me, it's well to finally meet her other friend. That's right, I heard the story. Don't be like our dance. Me, it's well to finally meet her other friend. What did you say about me? What did you say? What did you do without me? What did you do? Did you play games without me? What did you play? Did you think all this time that I wouldn't find out about you? Oh, that's right, I heard the story over and over again. Me, it's well to finally meet her other friend. You fucking ruined my life! I hate you! Try and run now! Fuck, that was Tom Hanks. Get out! Who am I? Who am I? What are you even saying? I'm the loser of the game you didn't know you were playing. Let's play another game, this time I get to win. Lies on the line, winner takes all, ready or not, let's begin. Oh, that's right, I heard the story over and over again. Gee, it's all to finally beat her other friends. Oh, that's right, I heard the story, don't really like how it ends. Gee, it's all to finally beat her other, other, other. Seven years have passed since the Los Poyos fire, and since then, it's become unclear as to if Los Poyos will ever make a comeback as a business. To this day, there are still attempts to bring it back. 
from small locations in Walmart to even funding local school lunches. But what is certain is that if it does return, Wilson will be there to put a stop to it, like he always has before, if he's not dealing with a divorce or eyeing up local waitresses. But those are other stories. These have been The Wilson Files. It would be so crappy. It would be so whiffy woo. It would be the most incredible Kaizo Mix the world has ever seen. The screens would force me out with real explosions. Five foot ten, like tons and tons of five foot ten. My super sweet force would be five foot ten. Ooh. 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 Ah. Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo Mix. It's all about Mark. Mark Kaizo 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 Mix. They'll be lining up to see him. Kaizo My son no longer a shopping cart. It's not me. Picture my deep deep in 3D. I'll shake my in my Kaizo 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 Mix. They'll be lining up to see Kaizo Mark I'm server deafening. Woo crappy big mean hairy loser. But not to worry. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd have an alter exit. I'd be Dan Crowmire. Standing five foot ten. Bell. And gorgeous hair. <laughs> Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo mix. It's all about Mark. It's all about Mark. Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo mix. He'll be lining up to see him. Kaizo, all about Mark. Rotten son. Go fuck yourself. Suicide is never the answer. Seek help immediately. Weef music! Play every time that I enter the Thursday night. And I'd say my sweet and ominous catchphrase. Oh, I'm David Attenborough and I shot cock. No! Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo mix. It's all about Mark. Mark, Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo mix. Kaizo, Mark, Kaizo, Kaizo, Kaizo mix. Mark, 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 Kaizo, Kaizo mix, Kaizo mix. Yeah, it's all about me. That's the dumbest shit I've ever had to do.